please welcome Mr. Brenton Bilcombe. Thank you. Hi guys, uh, my name's Brenton. I don't like my face. Right, I got this lesbian Jimmy Neutron thing going on. It's not good. And I'm a short guy. And let me tell you something, it's not fun being a short guy in 2019 because we are literally the last group of people you can just openly make fun of and nobody cares. No one cares. Like you can't say anything about anybody. They'll find you. They'll find you on Twitter. They'll get you fired. They'll end your life. Unless it's about short guys, they'll retweet it, make a fun hashtag. Like it's great that all these movements happened. Me too needed to happen, ladies. There were a lot of garbage men in power positions. They took advantage of you for way too long. Bring them down. But what nobody's talking about is how women have been equally psychologically evil to short men for centuries. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, as an experiment right now, pull out your phone, download any dating app, pretend to be a short guy, strap the fuck in. <laughs> you women are ruthless. Every profile, same thing. Hey, if you're under six feet, just swipe left. I don't wanna talk to you, that's gross. Ugh, you're not even real people. Ugh. You remind me of my little brother, it's adorable. Don't waste my time, I'm not gonna waste yours. And I got news for you ladies. At some point, you're gonna have to settle. <laughs> Not everybody gets to have kids or grow up to play in the NBA. Somebody's gotta be in the marching band. That's where short guy jeans come in. <laughs> I played trombone for four years. You know what that means? I have a very strong tongue, plus I'm low to the ground. I'm more likely to go down on you. That's just basic physics. <laughs> well, nobody's out there marching for us. There's no hashtag heels off. I'm on my own. But here's the thing, ladies. This is why I give short guys a chance. We have to work on our personalities. You understand me? I have to be fun to be around. I have to make you laugh. I have to make you think. I have to challenge you or you don't want to hang out. I can't just show up and pull something off a shelf and that's it. I got to bring it. I have a girlfriend. She loves me. I take care of her. I listen to everything she says. I remember things. Why? Because I have to. Because her ex, the guy she dated right before me, was 6'3". Her life has changed. Like if we go to a concert, I put it on my shoulders, she's staring at the back of the head, or the fuck's standing in front of us? If she wants to Netflix and chill, put on my oversized sweatshirt, it fits her. So I worked on my, I think I'm a good guy. I think she loves me. I do dumb stuff all the time. She hasn't left yet. Like, I screwed up our first Valentine's Day, she didn't leave. And she should have, it was way too early. It was like three months in, Valentine's Day was coming up. I was falling in love with her. I wanted to make her feel special, so I was listening for hints. So we were shopping, we're walking by at Tiffany's, and she stops me in front of the window. And she goes, you know, Brenton, ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted something from Tiffany's. I don't even care what I get, I just love that little blue box. I remember my dad gave my mom a necklace when I was eight, I remember how much love she felt, and I've carried that feeling with me my whole life. No, I'm not a smart man. I'm a sweet man, not a smart man. Valentine's Day was coming up, and I heard, hey, Brenton, I really want a Tiffany's box. That's what I heard. And guess what, you guys? If you walk into a Tiffany's and you ask them for a box, they give you just the box. They don't even charge it. They're just like, here, good luck never getting laid ever again. I went home happy with an empty box. I wrapped it, I swear to God, my biggest regret after I wrapped it was, oh, I should've gotten her a second box to put her box in because that reveal is gonna be crazy. I thought I killed it. I don't know if you've ever ruined someone's childhood dreams before, but they go through the stages of grief like someone in their family died. She opened it, she's going, what is this? Like, did it fall out? I know you're a comic, is this a joke? It's, it's not funny. And I was like, no, I got you the box, just like you said. She got confused, she was angry, she started crying at one point. But this is how I know she's my soulmate. She started laughing at me and she kept the box. She's had it for over four years now. She keeps that box on her vanity. The vanity is on my side of the bed. I sleep on my right side, that box is eye level. <laughs> Last thing I see at night, first thing I see in the morning, but now when I screw up, she's just like, hey, Brenton, that's not a big deal. Let's just take that mistake. Let's put it in the box because there's plenty of fucking room. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah.